Hello, this is Vasvi from Hetum Tuition. Let us find out the zeros of cubic polynomials. So let's write the standard form for a cubic polynomial, okay? So that would be like ax cubed. Since it is a cubic polynomial, it is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d would be a polynomial, okay? So your p of x would be this. So here, since the highest degree is 3, we know that the zeros, normally the maximum number of zeros you can get in this polynomial is 3. So you can either have one zero for a cubic polynomial or you can have two zeros or sometimes three zeros. Okay, so let's see each case. Now for the first one, for one zero, let me take an example p of x equals x cube, just the x cube, okay? So you find here, uh, whatever value you substitute in this, say uh, normally uh, we can give values from negative 2 to positive 2, okay? So this is when I give it as negative 2, it is going to be negative 2 the whole squared and that will be a whole cube, sorry, and that is minus 8, right? Okay, then P of minus 1 will be minus 1 the whole cubed. So that is equal to negative 1. And when P is 0, you find it is 0 cubed. So that's a 0 and hence you have got 1 0 here. Okay, you have got just 1 0. Now let's put P of 1. A positive 1 so that is going to be 1 cube and that's a positive 1 okay 1 cube is 1 right 1 and when it is p of 2 when you take the x value as 2 it is 2 cubed and you get the value 8 so plotting by plotting this you get so let's plot this when x is minus 2, your y is minus 8. So here it is, okay? When x is minus 1, your y is also minus 1. So that would be somewhere here. Now your x is 0 and so the y is also 0. So it is here. Okay? So that is a 0 because see it, it meets the x-axis. Okay, it cuts the, the graph will cut the x-axis at 0. Okay, now uh, when x is 1, y is also 1. So that will be somewhere here. And when x is 2, your y is 8. So that is here. So when you draw the graph, when you join the points, you would get something like this. Okay. So this is the curve you get and you find that the graph cuts the x-axis at only one point. So here you have one zero, okay? The number of zero is one. Now let's see how you get two zeros and three zeros. For that I take an example p of x as x cube. I'm taking the simple examples, okay? And this is x squared. So let's solve for this. Again the same way you're going to substitute the x values. So this is going to be minus 2 the whole cube. Minus 2. Minus, minus of minus 2 the whole squared. So that's minus 8 and plus 4 right. So minus of plus 4 is minus 4. So that gives you negative 12 here. Next, let's take P of negative 1. So that's minus 1 the whole cube. Minus of minus 1 the whole squared. So what happens here? Minus 1 cube is negative 1. And this will become a positive 1. But when you multiply with a negative sign outside, this is minus 1. So that is going to be minus 2 here. Next one is p of 0, right? Let's put p of 0. So it is 
0 cube minus 0 square which is a 0 so you got 1 0 here now p of 1 let's take p of 1 so that will be 1 cubed minus 1 square so that's 1 minus 1 which is 0 again so you got two zeros now okay now when you take p of 2 it is going to be 2 cube minus 2 squared so that is nothing but 8 minus 4 right so that's a positive 4 so you find there is only two zeros here okay so I can say we have two zeros here so again if you want you can plot it so let's plot for minus 2 it is minus 12 since you don't have that I'm just I'll just skip that for minus 1 you've got negative 2 right so this is your say for instance you have your 12 here okay negative 10 and negative 12 here right it will be somewhere here so your minus 2 would be somewhere here okay so here what happens hmm, yeah this is your then for 0 it is 0 so here this is 0 and 0 for 1 again it is 0 so it is here okay for 1 it is 0 and for 2 it is 4 so you find two zeros one over here and the other one over here at 1 got it so this is for two zeros and finally let's see an example for three zeros so i take my polynomial p of x i'm taking as simple as possible so i take it as x cubed minus 4x okay so let's put the values so that's p of minus 2 so that's going to be minus 2 the whole cube which is 8 and here it is 4 times minus 2 so that becomes a plus 8 right so you have minus 8 and plus 8 here which is equal to 0 okay you've got 1 0 so mark it then next it is p of minus 1 so that's going to be minus 1 the whole cube minus 4 times minus 1 so minus 1 the whole cube is minus 1 and minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4 so your answer here is 3 next p of 0 let's take p of 0 so that is going to be 0 cube minus 4 times the 0 so that's again a 0 so you got the second 0 for this polynomial so let's mark that too now take p of 1 so that's going to be 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 so that's 1 minus 4 so that's going to give you minus 3 here okay negative 3 so lastly we take p of 2 so here you find it is 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 so that's uh, 8 minus 8 right so that is again a 0 you got three zeros here okay now let's plot this again so when it is minus 2 it is 0 so when the x is minus 2 your y is 0 so it is over here now when x is minus 1 your y is 3 minus 1 and it is 3 so it comes here okay next when x is 0 y is also 0 so that is here over here and then when x is 1 your y is minus 3 so that is here okay minus 3 x is 1 and y is minus 3 i've marked that and when x is 2 your y is 0 so you see that the polynomial goes from here it cuts here comes down and again go up and cut here okay so it goes like this so you see that the zeros cut the x-axis at three places okay so here you have three zeros remember you can for a cubic polynomial you can have either one zero 
or two zero or the or three zeros. Okay. So here in general, given to sum up. Okay, to sum up. In general, given a polynomial p of x, the polynomial is p of x, and it has got a degree n degree. Okay, so if you have a polynomial with n degree, then the graph of y equals p of x intersects the x coordinates, x axis, at most n points. See, if the degree is n, you will have n points here. Okay. It cuts the x-axis at n points. Therefore, a polynomial p of x of a degree n has at most n zeros. So I told you, depending upon the polynomial, how much ever degree you have written here. Say, for instance, if you have x raised to five uh, minus three uh, x squared plus seven, if this is your polynomial. And the, your highest degree, the power is n. So here, the, this polynomial's degree is n. So you will have five zeros. Now, the second point is that any polynomial of odd degree will never have nil zero. See, for instance, now you have said for cubic polynomial, you will have one two one zero two zero or three zero, right? So likewise, any odd degree, say for instance, if the degree is 1, 3, uh, 5, 7, likewise if it goes, at least 1 zeros you will have for it, okay? You can have more than a zero, but at least 1 you will have. You cannot say there is no zero for this, okay? But when the degree is even, so this is degree is odd, right? And the degree is even like 2, 4, 6, 8. In that case, you can have from no zeros, you can have, depending upon the degree, you can have that many zeros. Okay? You can have from zeros. I hope you understood the meaning of zeros and how it is applied in a polynomial, right? practice more problems on this and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.